Well, good morning, Kid Nation. Good to see you this morning, and I'm glad that you could be with me uh, this morning. Remember what we talked about on Tuesday about taking a, a big job and breaking it up into little pieces over time that we could get it get it done? Well, I took on a big, not really a job, but a task. So I'm, I've been trying to read a book a week. And so this is my book. It's on economics, but... I don't know that I've ever read a book this big. It's 600 pages. I've been trying to read a book a week. I don't know if I can read this one a week, but what I've been doing is what we talked about on Tuesdays, just breaking it up into bite-sized pieces. And so when I would normally pick up my phone and maybe look at Facebook or social media, instead I'm picking up my book and reading you know, two or three pages here and there. And we'll just see how that goes. I'll let you know uh, how we do with that. So we have been in the book of Nehemiah, reading about Nehemiah and him returning to Jerusalem uh, to try and get the walls fixed. And so we are in, we're still in chapter two today, and then we're going to kind of kind of get into chapter three just a little bit. So if you guys want to start reading chapter three, that'd be awesome. So let me go ahead and read our devotional to you today, and then we'll pray, and then we'll get on with our Thursday. Nehemiah's plan was taking shape. He had gone out to inspect the broken down wall around Jerusalem. Now he was ready to tell the leaders of his plan. When they heard of his plan to rebuild the wall, they were excited and said, let's start building right away. But some leaders were not happy about Nehemiah's plan. First they laughed at him, then they accused him of rebelling against the king of Persia. But Nehemiah said, the God of heaven will help us. We are his servants and we are going to build the wall. Then Nehemiah divided up the work so that the small families of people and families <clears throat> would be responsible for building a specific section of the wall. So they kind of divided up the work according to families. So can anyone be a builder? What does one need to become a builder? Do you think one would need to have a special skill and do a building course? Well, most of those who were given the task of rebuilding a certain part of the wall were not trained builders. They were just ordinary people doing ordinary jobs. There were priests, perfume makers, goldsmiths, and traders. Even the children helped. The daughters of Shalem and the sons of Hassana helped repair their section of the wall. Just as the people in Jerusalem had different jobs, we had different talents and gifts. Yet when we serve God, we should be prepared to help with the ordinary tasks too. Help with chairs or tidying up or things we can do, even though we may be gifted in other ways. Each one should do his or her bit to build up the church. Every person should work together with the person next to them to ensure a strong wall that has no gaps where the enemy can break through. So here's our bonus scripture for the day. By the grace of God has given me... Let me say it again. By the grace of God has given me, I, ha I laid a foundation as an expert builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. So this is a really important uh, subject for us uh, today. Now, what am I at, at FCF Church? I'm the children's pastor. And so there's some responsibilities that come along with that. And I like to meet with you guys and talk to you guys. But there are some times when we just need to stack some chairs. Well, can I say, hey, look, I'm the children's pastor. I don't really stack chairs. That's not really my calling. No, you just grab chairs and stack them. And maybe that's how you guys do the things in your home. Uh, maybe when there's a big job, uh, you got to do the yard or do laundry or dishes. You all kind of pitch in and everyone do a little bit at our house when we're going to do big tasks outside we all go out together and everyone grabs a rake or a shovel or whatever it is that we're working on and we work on it until we can get it done and that really makes it to where we can get it done in the least amount of time and it's more enjoyable that way have you ever had to go out and do a big job but you got to do it with people that you enjoy being with and so you were able to talk during the day and it's still work and you're sweaty and dirty or whatever you're doing but you got to talk and fellowship a little bit and it was fun and yet at the end of the day i remember one time we oh, it was hot outside man it was hot outside it's one of those summer days where it's just like, oh my gosh, I just want to go inside. But we had some work outside that just had to be done. So 
myself and Miss Jennifer and Aaron and Samantha, we went outside and just got to work. And we didn't work for too long, maybe an hour, hour and a half, but it was hot and we were sweating. And we got done and Samantha said something interesting. She said, that's the most fun work I've ever done. Well, why was it was done? Let me tell you, that work was not fun, but it was the fact that we were all out there together, doing it together, and that part was fun. And so the way Nehemiah was assigning these tasks to the families, the families were out there together. And it didn't matter if, if, if the dad was a dentist and the mom was a doctor, they were both out there still working on those walls because that's what needed to be done. And so we really want to be willing to pitch in and help anytime there's a chance to help. And everybody can help. Everybody has something to offer and everybody can help. And that's really good. So let's pray. And then we're going to get on with our Thursday. I think it's going to be hot again today. So you guys be careful when you go outside. Make sure you drink plenty of water and take some breaks and maybe some sunscreen. It's good for your skin. Anyway, Lord, we thank you for this morning. Father, we're just really grateful for your word and the way that you have empowered us to help people and, and just to be helpful and useful to those around us, Father. We're really grateful for that. I just pray for Kid Nation today, Lord, that they're safe while they're playing outside, that they're getting ready for school, that they're doing all these things, Father, and I just pray that you're with them and you protect them and watch over them. Just really grateful for that, Lord. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I love you, Kid Nation. It's been a good Thursday morning, and I'll see you again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.